Good morning, guys. This is Minnie back here, and um, today, sorry about last week, I had a lot of things going on last week. Um, we didn't get to do the start of Scarold World Wednesday. You guys got the intro. Um, today is April the 18th. I got a lot going on today. Um, but what I come to you guys with today is um, Pete and I had worked over the weekend um, doing some things. Um, we set up we set up a new email account for you guys. Um, you guys can um, email us um, for questions um, if you want to see something, a suggestion for something. Um, we're going to have that up and it is called let me write this down for you guys. Um, I didn't have all my notes together. Alright, as of right now, we got a new um, email for scaledworldweekly at yahoo.com. Now this is just um, an email set up uh, that we're going to do for questions um, and whatnot. Um, for you guys if you have suggestions or a question um still use the regular links here um still use the regular links here to um visit skilled world on facebook and on instagram and then here's some information to feature your guys's um builds um the new email we got right here it will be in the screen too right there um the new email we got is just to handle questions that way the one email um, can be there for you guys um, at Scaled World to, to show your pieces. A lot of great pieces came up this week. Um, Pete's been very busy over there um, this week. Um, we, we're going to try to get a PayPal account um, set up to the Scaled World Weekly um, email group. That way you guys can um, have an easier way to take part in um, the raffles we have planned and, and whatnot. Um, what I have for you guys today in front, if you guys go to the new site, oh, not to the new site, but if you go to Scaled World, um, we have the option now where you can move um, Scaled World to a, a home page. Um, if you go to Google, um, I'm on a Samsung Note for this one is our tab four I should say um, I'm recording on um, an s9 um, so I don't know if the picture is going to come through um, but you can go there now and you can save it um, a lot of links that I like to purchase things from and that we like to use things from um, I got on this this tablet here is just going to be for um, the scaled world uh, weekly um, as we grow as um, we find new vendors and stuff like that, we'll add links and show you guys new products and stuff. Um, but first, let's go to the Scaled World app. You hit that. It's going to pull it up. Um, got a bunch of other stuff I've been messing with today. Um, right there, you're going to see a lovely um, street rod um, that um, John from Gap Hill Speed Shop had built. Um, and John is a big member of Scaled World. Got a lot of builds coming for Pete um, at Scaled World. Um, and I got more information coming up there. Um, some of the newest articles coming up, guys. This really neat Hummer. Um, very detailed, really neat kit. Um, it's a Ming kit, I believe. Um, there's going to be more features in there. Um, it's from Vita. Um, Um, it's really neat um, Nissan I believe this is a Nissan NRX uh, NSX um, super really love this car here um, I actually have this kit it's actually a plain bare knuckles kit and to see all the details done to that um, and when you guys go to scaledworld.net you'll be able to see more features of these cars um, Lewis um, Sanchez awesome Nova dude awesome Nova and he also has two featured within the last week um, I'll try to give you guys an update an update an update from Wednesday to Wednesday on what's going on there um, you guys can see um, 
you guys will be able to see uh, more once you hit the links where it says featured there you can hit the links um, I really like this skyline um, this right here is one of the uh, one of uh, this right here is really um, cheesy cast kit um, and they did a great job with with this one um, looks great on their uh, Brandon um, and then our friend Freddie from H Town Model Works has featured his 60 Impala a um, lot of great paint work and stuff in there Freddie has come a long ways um, in his paint work and paint job um, here's another one of Lewis's uh, funny cars um he did this one um got featured this week too um so like i said from wednesday to wednesday um, i'm going to try to show you guys what all is done um and then right here is our the link to the facebook page um and this right here is new um with pete and me doing the um weekly wednesday update if you guys missed the live show or um maybe someone here um didn't know uh that i do the weekday wednesday thing there you go let me get that in there it's an actual button now um you can go in there you click that button um and it'll take you to uh, the youtube stuff and then you know just scroll on up and then it goes and then it plays in there um and then right there we'll just go and then you hit the live chat you can see what people are chatting like you know you'll see me make a comment um to my friend tom jackson over at woods chopper and if i make a comment say tom that's a really cool van you're working on or something you guys might not know what i'm talking about now you guys can see um tom's reply or you know maybe somebody ask a question that i didn't get to answer um now i can go back and um and actually read and see those so those are will all pretty be pretty well good um so that's what's going on with scaled world itself um let me i got some notes here um some other things that are going on is some let's do some product shout out um this week um chris hales over at c1 has um i'm gonna close all these out guys um chris over at c1 has done some great um new releases you guys got to check these out um i got the c1 format in there i don't know why i keep closing everything but keeps opening everything up um so it's probably going to take forever then boop 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 get out of there no nope, we don't want that don't want that Scaled World Wednesday, we'll leave that up. All right, so right now, um, you'll see some of the products um, that Chris has coming out. Um, and then you just see some nice stuff coming from C1. Um, the new um, RBW, RWB kit is coming out. Let's see. He'll Let's show some of this stuff that he's doing. Um, Chris is a big helper um, for us builders over here at Scaled World. Um, he offers a lot of kits. Um, there's a lot of new pre-orders coming out. Um, some nice stuff coming. Um, it's not really showing the new stuff on here let's go to facebook we'll go to facebook and see the c1 stuff because he's got a new porsche cayman coming out um it's 42 euros um for you guys it's going to be like 60 dollars for us uh u.s guys um really really good looking Come on. I was in Jimmy Flintstone today. Jimmy Flintstone released some new stuff today. Um, really killer stuff. Um, if you guys follow Ted Lear, um, we call him the Chopper. Um, he's been working on a series of annual um, Lincolns. And Jimmy Flintstone actually released a Lincoln this day. Uh, uh, pictures of a Lincoln coming. Um, let's go to Chris's page. You guys know we're about to do um, the VW Caddy in... Um, my and my VW build for the year, but um, Chris um, released pictures of this, which is good looking Porsche. Um, it's a trans kit. It's available for pre order now, and like I said, it's going to be forty two euros or sixty oh eight for the U S dollar once you do your your transfers. Um, and then this right here, um, 
I don't know if we'll tack this one um, right off. Um, I know Chris will be at the NNL East um, this weekend. Um, he'll be over here in the States over there. Um, it looks neat. My opinion on it is I like the new hood. I'm not feeling the front bumper Valance and where it don't meet those corners there. But he added in a whole body line piece, a whole new body line piece that takes a, a different style, the wider fender from the Sunny Kit to here. Um, if I get this kit, um, we'll look through it and we'll see how we can modify um, this right here to be a better, um, maybe cut it more at an angle like some of the Rocket Bunny is. Um, Chris did a great job, love the hood, and I do love the wide body stuff. I'm just not feeling the bumper. I'm just not feeling this area of the of the of the build um love that front balance and um the hood is going to be sick and um, that kit there will be um it's the carbon if you guys can see as that carbon style hakatura um it's going to be 32 euro um 4577 us dollar and then look at this beast guys here they're right here showing him working it all you know hand working it um it does look like on here it kind of looks like it's one unit like the other front end we got for this the one we built for scaled world um it had the front flares built in to the resin front end and then we added on the rear flares but on this one here from this prototype picture it looks like chris has a whole new front end and um just those flares so what i was what I was hoping, if this right here is separate than that front end, that we can just do a front end swap and keep a factory Nissan looking body without the flares like we put on the yellow one. Um, so then, look at this, guys. Um, he's going to be bringing out a shooting brake Camaro. Um, really nice. He should have all three of these this weekend um, at the NNL East, but they're open for pre order. Um, on the website, what happens is he can only take so much flying from, um, I think it's Germany, um, over to the States. So, you know, he's limited on supp on supplies at the show, but all these right here will be pre-ordered um, up on the website. On this Camaro, it takes the AMT um, new Camaro, and it, it was 38 euros. Uh, 54 35 for us but you're getting a full body and everything um guys this is going to be a beast um this is just so so good looking um to have um and then here he shows you the amt body um with the camaro body um eliminates all the frustration of doing body work like when i made the mustang um shooting brake and there's a few other guys out there that's made um the r33 into a shooting brake um you know it, he uh, chris has eliminated all the body work for us um and gives us this this great kit um a little bit pricey on the back end i understand that um but to get the quality and stuff that you get from these guys it has just been, it's been beautiful. Um, I can open it up. I can do some cleaning and I can go build. I don't have to fill in um, an, an uh, astronomical amount of air bubbles. You don't have to reshape anything. Um, Chris does his homework. He gives us a great product, well worth every penny um, that we spend. Um, what sucks is the shipping. As a lot of you guys know, um, we can't control the shipping. Um, I see some shipping um, just last week. Um, the ISM guys had their charity auction for Models for Hero. And you can see some of the shipping um, within the UK to another UK member was like three, four pounds, right? And that ain't nothing. But to get it from us to them, I mean, from them to us, you know, we're looking at 20 some dollars on, on some of the shipping. And um, it draws some bad attention, but it it's not intentional guys we we can't we can't you know change that um one kit from pete to me was 15 dollars, and that's you know seven states you know pr probably 1200 miles you know from pete's house to my house and you know you're talking um new jersey area yonkers new york is where pete 
is from. So you you take Yonkers, New York to, um, let's say the closest city to me that's populated would be Kansas City. So, you know, that's like 40 miles for me. So you got to go and, you know, $15 shipping for one plastic kit. Um, so it's not cheap no matter where you go. Um, my other notes was I already showed you guys the new features from Andrew Brown, uh, from Luis Sanchez, um, John Stancliffe, uh, Brandon Butler. Um, you got Freddie at H-Town Models work. And I don't know this last gentleman's name. Um, Tavino Alamalka. He took a die cast uh, Willie's. Um, a Willie's Company diecast VW Sonata. Um, they're four doors. Um, he took one, made it a two door, and um, put some um, liveries on it, like he's going to, um, like making it a race car. You guys can see all that um, over on Scaled World um, dot net, or you guys can see it on the Scaled World Facebook page. Um, also, this weekend um, they are doing the NNL East in New Jersey. Um, Go out there if you guys are up in that area. Go up there, have some fun, um, enjoy the hobby. Um, whether you're showing, buying, um, of anything like that, I got some pictures I can't share with you guys of some of the gentlemen I'm um, setting up for the N and L East. Um, but right here is um, one of our good friends, Nicholas. Um, he won a nice trophy um, sometime um, earlier this year with the C1 body um, at an NNL event. Um, you will we'll see him at the NNL East. He goes um, quite often. Um, you guys will be able to see Vision 124. Um, you guys will be able to see Pete if you go there from Scaled World. Um, the whole Diversified Scalers um, Club will be up there along with some other East Coast clubs. Um, Another thing me and Pete have been enjoying um, is a young man by the name of Edgar. Um, he's been doing a podcast. Um, it's Scale Writers. Um, you can follow him at ScaleWriters.com. Um, let's see. Another thing I want to um, share with you guys this week. This is something that you know me and Pete had talked about. Um, the main reason for ScaledWorld.net, like I mentioned before, guys. Um, ScaledWorld.net is a place for you guys to... Um, show your hobby interest on the automotive side um, so go over there don't be afraid to share your work no matter what stage or style it is um, but with me building the Aeroshima Liberty Walk kit um, John Stancliffe is building uh, a Scaled World Liberty Walk kit and we have our good friend Tom Ritter Ridger, I don't know how to say your last name, Tom, sorry. Um, he is building one. You can watch him build his now over on YouTube. Um, it is looking very good. Let's see if we can't go go see that real quick. I hope my volume's down. Yeah, my volume's down. Then, let's see. Let's go. Uh, nope, not that. Do that, my channel. All right, let's see. Playlist. We had some liked videos on here. Here it is. Now, right now, Tom has um, did a beautiful yellow goldish color on the one he's building. Um, you guys can follow Tom over at the Scale Modeling channel. Um, he's been doing some great work, and when Tom goes to do his scale modeler thing, um, he goes in through a lot of stuff. Um, he's a very, very, I mean, a very detailed, um, most of the time out-of-box builder, but he does, he does such good work. You guys can go in there and follow him. He's going to show you some of the tips and tricks that he does, um, but he's also building um, one of these GTRs for um, scaled world so I wanted to mention that but not only that Tom also has um, his own um, sales page and it is going to be the scalemodeler.com you guys can go there um, he has an array of products um, he, he is a distributor now he is overseas um, for you American guys but he stocks bell kit um, zero paints I made a big list of everything he does 
Um, he does zero paint, C1 model stuff, um, scale productions, which me and Pete have used scale productions on the rabbit rebuild we did for Pete uh, sometimes last year. Um, he stocks plasma wheels. Um, he is a hobby design distributor. Um, Ukrainian sports, um, Ukrainian scale car car productions. Um, some of their stuff, which I have an update to give you guys on them. Um, he is a seller for 8181, which you know we love their parts and body kits. Um, scale Motorsports, which would be a lot of your decals, a lot of upgraded kits. Um, the Alclad 2 stuff. Um, Highlight Model Studios, which is very cool right now. It's just a lot of photo etch for... Um, it's just a lot of photo etch for right now, a lot of Volkswagens, um, but he, he's coming up and, and doing some other stuff. Um, he is a distributor for my glue I use here, this Bob Smith Industries glue. Um, he is a distributor for that. And then Street Blisters, I sorry guys, I do not know what that product is, but he's a direct distributor for that. But if you go to his website, there's the home. Um, and then you can search by brand and it just has all kinds of products and and whatnot So it's usually fully stocked um, zero paints which the same kind of paints that um, we watch our friend Steve Hemmings um, produces over there at Hyro boy um, Which is another great website for you guys um, You know you, you buy what you can close to you or, or where you feel friendly with um Here's Hyro Boy's uh, account, and then like Steve, you guys can contact Steve and his crew straight on Facebook. Um, they're very informational. Um, they'll they'll give you um, an email, respond to your questions or what have you. Um, just a great great group of guys, not only to buy from but also to call my friend. Um, Zoom on is a, a company that uh, me and Pete are going to use when we build our. Um, TDR design um, Supras um, let this load up for you guys I told Pete today I wanted to go live um, and for a couple hours <laughs> and this is why this is something I wanted to do for you guys not only just build a product for you guys but but you know share you guys some information let you know what's on scaledworld.net let you know what some of our great community members are building um and this right here is some of the stuff you know john posted up this week on his um bench update videos where john is doing a few of the um zoom on um honda spoons and this is a kit me and pete will be doing right here um, just great website even just to go look at, at pictures this is that we ain't even got into the product this is just built stuff uh, that zoom on sells and it's, it's just a great site to check out um, so if we pull that up you can go right there and you know their zoom on's good about telling you um, they're in a restock um, they're in the process of building stuff this is gallery of stuff being built and, and John is planning on building all those spoons right there um, he's got a big task on hand for that. Um, and then, you know, our friend Jeremy John over at Clearly Scale, you guys can set it up right to your home page. Um, he's added a cart now. Um, there's some things going on um, in, in the behind scenes that I've got to see a few um, prototype pictures of you guys, um, especially in the pro touring um, scene. You guys are going to have some great, great stuff coming out of um out of uh, scale uh, clearly scale really soon um, and just a few other things I put up there I put up hobby design you got 81 um, now let me tell you guys about the Ukrainian scale car productions um, we got this kit here we got this kit here to build for scaled world and um, I got the trans kit for it but this right here is a kit from um, Ukrainian scale car productions um, Sadly to say, um, they've shut down, guys, for a little while. Um, they put the message up on their website. Um, they're going to focus more on... They have items posted up on eBay, and it says that if you've had um, an order of something, um, that they fulfilled the order, but right now, um, they're shutting down. They're going to um, 
reevaluate where um, how their castings are done, um, the production of their castings. Um, you guys know with casting, it's a fad. Um, so what happens is I'm going to give you guys a Nissan market. It looks like a hundred people want this custom body. Um, want this custom body. Um, they make a cus a hundred custom bodies and they sell thirty. You know, or um, they make one or two or something just to see how it goes, and then uh, and then the company get overwhelmed with the request. You know, um, so they're gonna they're gonna look at what they do. Um, like Chris Hells at C1, um, like Jeremy um, John at at clearly at clearly scale. Um, when you're doing um, when you're doing a company like this big products like this and and you're a person that has a full-time job and a family to take care of um it's kind of hard to get out there and produce so let's uh wish uh marcia over there at um uscp um a, uh you know a great rebuild hopefully they get their stuff back together and get us back with some great products um he just they just gave us some new bmw stuff they just gave us um where you could take the subaru hatchback from aeroshima and make it actually the four-door car um so there's some great products out there you can still find their products on ebay right now they just stopped taking um online orders um what else was out there this week um steve courtney is um about to start a revel 64 suburban i think it is he's about to start the revel suburban for scaled world um he built two over the last month um he built two he built an out of box one and then he built what he called the big wheel custom um which has a fabulous paint job on it i can't find my suburban kit now i know i have one and I just can't find it. I believe it's a 64 Suburban. All right. And um, the Cell Shack. I wanted Brian um, Butler from um, Facebook. He runs the Model Hub Facebook page. He took the Cell Shack down off the... Um, thanks, Tom. Um, Tom says it's a 66. Um Brian Buster took the Cell Shack down off of Facebook. Um, he's got a web page now um, where you can go buy some stuff. And he's actually now, um, he's featuring some of his own paints. And it's some good looking colors. Um, let, let's get to where he, new features, let this load up. I'm going to take a drink real quick, guys. Now, if you see right there. He's making his own color of paints now, um, so so go over to his page, check that out. And um, he got a he bought a big um, overstock sale of somebody getting out of a hobby business, and um, he got a bunch of Ross Gibson motors. Um, they're not cheap, guys. Um, Ross used to have some great motors, um, sadly passed away, um, no longer in business, nobody in the family wanted to keep, uh, keep it going, um, so, um, Brian ended up getting, uh, a nice little load, um, of Ross Gibson motors, um, so go over there and check that out, um, there's a guy in the community named Matt, he loves to build, um, these pro mods and hot rods so hopefully he ain't bought them all <laughs> so you got to get over there and check that out and um you know then he has kits as well he has open kits sealed kits and he'll show a picture of a kit that's been open or sealed say you guys are looking for something rare um yes anthony i can read your comments um what i try to do anthony um during the live show i try not to answer um, any questions um, that way I can stay on topic a lot of times um, I get pulled away if you've ever watched one of my um, live builds um, we'll spend a whole day talking and no day working so I kind of uh, trying to limit myself but there is a new feature now on YouTube where I can go back through um, after the show is published I can go back through and um, see your guys' questions and I can address them. I got me a whole brand new notebook just for Scaled World Weekly is what we're going to call this. Um, and we're going to get some information out there. 
Um, the last thing I want to talk about is um, Ravel has shut the doors and it made... Um, <laughs> I agree to that, John. I'll agree to that. Um, <laughs> um, Ravel, out of nowhere last Friday... Um, shut down their U.S. distributions and manufacturing of kits. And uh, rumor was that it went to an auction block where they had two bidders. Um, it was bought by uh, a resource company, is what they're calling them, um, out of Germany. Um, what they do is they buy de-stress companies, um, reformat them, and then um, get them back on the flow of, of um, production again and get them back above water. Um, a lot of people um, will complain through the communities about prices and about molds and new tools and this and that. I will give it to Ravel the last four or five years. We always got something new along with the handful of repops. Um, the prices jumped. You know, if I bought a Ravel, um, let's let's take in, in, in case the Ravel Donk Impala. All right, when it first came out, it was a black snap-together kit six dollars anywhere it was six dollars it disappears for a little bit it comes back out as a glue kit fifteen dollars comes back out as the low rider like eighteen dollars because it had a little hot wheel with it that matched then the donks came out and now they're 20 bucks nobody bought them because of the donk they didn't look inside the box to see that it had both stock equipment it had the donk stuff a lot of people seen the box art took a shit on it and the, the kits went to, um, say, Big Lots. Some of you guys have Oli's, you know, and they liquidated the kits. Um, but then we got new kits like the Charger that we're going to do for Scaled World. Um, the Suburban that came out. We've gotten the Bronco. We've gotten um, Mustangs, Camaros, the Corvettes, you know. Um, granted, some of the stuff is coming back after they did the die cast first. Um, I seen a video this weekend. I forgot who it was um, that bought the Bullet Mustang kit it's red on the box but basically it's just the plastic version of the die cast that Ravel had put out um, when Ravel did the die cast for um, Steve McQueen um, the same with the charger that came out under the Steve McQueen um, but it went to they bought out Ravel of Germany all the Ravel names and everything some of the information I wrote down here says that that James covers over at the stash report you guys can go follow more of James's um, conversation over there at the stash report um, he talked about how how it was part of the Habako um, franchise that had actually owned the shares of Ravel here in the U.S., um, along with the distributions of Il Itatari and Hazagawa, which we like Hazagawa kits. We've built several Hazagawa kits. Um, the the C One Sunny was a Hazagawa kit. Um, we got several other Hazagawa kits on hand right now to build. In fact, um, but. With all that said, it's going to go to a German company, which also bought Ravello Germany. Um, I've expressed how I feel about Ravel and Ravello Germany in comparing the VW Rabbit kit and then the VW Golf kit. Um, for the same kit at the same price, Ravello Germany gives you twice as many decal options, way better instructions layout. I like the way everything was packed in the box, even though it's a long, thin box. Um, I like it because it ain't the body smashed against the roof of the box with everything underneath of it. Um, if we get Ravel's kits back, because supposedly this um, restructure company bought everything. Um, if we get it back and it's under the Ravel name, I would prefer... To get the better quality stuff like Ravel Germany, if I've got to pay $25 for a kit, um, I'd rather have the most, like anybody, get the most for that kit, I guess. Um, but that's some of the stuff that goes that was been going on um, throughout the community that Scale World and I wanted to share with you. Um, let's see, we got that, got that, we'll get that right there. Let's move this. I don't know what that in there. Google always wants you to do something. Um, this is a picture of the 70 Impala um, that I gave to Pete 
um, and he took a picture of it and did all that. Um, Pete is great with computer editing. Um, so is George Ramos over there at Vision 124, um, which, in fact, you guys will be able to see them at their show. Um, at their show, like I'll be promoting this every time I can, guys. Um, great group of guys, a great model club. Um, their 7th annual model car contest is going to be September 29th. Um, in the same building that they're going to be in this weekend for the NNL East. Um, and then right here, American Muscle Cars. Um, and then Themes. Um, and then this is what we're all building our cars for, is for the little sub theme parking lot. Um, it was great to have everything in the Honda parking lot for the last couple of years. Um, they've been doing a Honda meet um, this year. Um, I'm more of a Nissan fan than I am of the Hondas, so, so I'm really liking this. All right, and then just to let you guys know some stuff that you guys can focus on building if you want to attend this show. And then all this, and then, which I like is Junior's. Um, it is so great. Um, they're getting them promoted into there, you know, getting them 12 and under. Um, some places, some of your Junior's, or 10 and under and then you go pre-teens you know up and then what sucks about the pre-teen class and some of the shows that i've attended over the year if you're 11 to like 15 they consider pre-teens and some of these kids didn't even get involved in the modeling until later you know until they were 10 or 11 and they're going to go up against somebody that's been building for five or six years so sometimes it, it's neat to see them grow but it's kind of you know, they get deterred. You know how kids are if they don't win, you know. So sometimes um, I like it how um, they put 12 and under on here, and they're going to be the ones that judge. Um, and then right here, the Nissan Day, guys, this is what we're going for um, right there. Um, Pete built the 69 Camaro from, from C1. Um, so you'll be able to see that there in this theme. Um, really nice, all blacked out, wide body Camaro. Looks sick. Um, we didn't get it done, but we had the 69 Camaro, um, don uh, 69 Mustang donated from C1, Chris Hells and C1. Um, but we didn't get it done. We've had a lot of stuff going on. Me and Pete are going to build this car here for you guys. Um, we're going to build this one for you guys, and then it's going to get raffled off, and um, you guys will be able to see the whole build on this one, why it's getting raffled off. Um, it was a donation from C1. Um, Pete and I purchased the kit. Um, Chris Hells sent the, the, the addition, and so we're going to get that there together for you. Um, all right, there will be a nice little raffle coming up. Um, we're still waiting on a few things. We still want to do the Minis Toolbox with all the tools. Um, we got in touch with um, Hunter. Um, Hunter's life uh, went in a different direction last year, so he had to refocus, redid his hobby room. I said his life. I meant his hobby. Hobby went in a different direction last year. Sorry, Hunter. Um, and he's been redoing his modeling room in, in his dungeon and stuff. And um, so we know he's been busy. But as soon as he gets a chance, we have plans to do the, the, the Minis Toolbox raffle and um, what have you. So that's this week's notes. That's this week's um, this week's themes and, and what have you. Shout outs and, and what not. So let's... Um, Let's move on to the real deal business stuff. Um, we've already introduced, I'm gonna turn this off guys. I said off, there you go. We've already introduced the build. I kind of might do two of the builds at once knowing that the Nissan parking lot thing is coming up quick, but let's get into Let's get into our, I'm calling this the SWC, the Skilled World Challenger. And then, um, we already introduced all the parts and pieces that we'll be using. Um, I've already showed you guys that I modified, um, I added the bumpers on this already and then the, the fins and stuff the other day just sitting around tweaking. Um, I bought two... I bought two um, like pre-painted built-ups 
already, guys. Um, my mind was going blank on this. I was telling Pete I didn't know if I wanted to do um, a convertible, if I wanted to make this a shooting brake. Um, so we decided the first kit we're going to do, um, we'll just, we're going to build it with the C1 options. Um, and then we're going to go from there. We got the C1 options. Um, we got some of the clearly scale options, um, but clearly scale offers, um, quite a few different things for this. Um, so we're going to go from there. Um, Pete says I can make this my own. Um, so I've been dwelling over what I need to do, um, so I'm thinking I'm going to clean off this rear here. I, I kind of don't like the fin coming over the side. Um, fits well. It fits really well, matter of fact. It's just something that I, 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 don't, I don't know if I like or not, you know. And um, I kind of smoothed in all the bumpers and stuff. There's still a lot of ways to go on here. Um, so oh, then I filled in the fog lights, guys. Um, the kit itself, um, even on... If you see on the C1 box, um, it has um, a different valance and um, the fog lights. I filled in our fog lights on this one. I just think it was a, a nice and cleaner look. And then um, Pete uh, removed the grill area for me. Um, and then we got the Hobby Design um, photo wedge to put in there. Um, so, you know, then I got some cleanup to do. We're going to make this. Um, flare uh, this bottom air diffuser um, run into um, these flares here there's a little bit of a gap but um, when you do something like this guys um, the first thing I would suggest is take the body out um, make sure you get all your body lines out that's something Pete also um, did before I got the kit um, like you say if you go watch tom's videos over there at scaled modeling channel he'll show you with the marker and that's what pete did um you follow the body lines that have a, a molding line on it and then you sand until that black disappears um i'm using ump sanders again um they're ultimate model the ultimate modeling products um you can find them right there Um, let's see, let's see, where am I going now? Um, I buy them in, I buy them in the multi-pack, guys, you can buy them singles. Um, I buy them in the multi-packs because I use, I use the tart out of them. Um, you know, they'll come in a label like this and I need to get buffers or done. And then, so I'll be using those. I don't know if I'm going to do any filling today guys but if so all the bondo work is going to be um this combi spot putty um it seemed to work well on the rabbits that i'm working on and it seemed to work really good on i bought it um the first vehicle i used it on was the c1 sunny that is already at scale world um so when I would do something like this, guys, I know I've done a lot of this stuff off camera, um, but the first thing I do is make sure the body's smooth. It's going to be kind of hard to fix any um, body flaws um, if you put stuff like this in the way um, because then you're going to damage what you put on. And then if you don't have a clean body to start with, you don't get a good fitment with your resin stuff. Um, Pete had already located um, the front bumper um diffuser and the rear um and the rear from um clearly scale when i got it um but um i cut them back off and i shortened this one um and then i re i, I moved this one up forward just for my own liking and looks um so you'll see i'm, I'm gonna have to i'm i'm gonna make the body all smooth um so i'm gonna have to fill in um the c1 marker light and the reveal um, indicator spot there. I'm going to have to fill that stuff in. Um, the first thing you do, you want to get it nice and smooth. You want to get, for me, it's easier to get um, the look of the vehicle so I can see exactly the direction I want to go in. Um, so I usually build it kind of quick 
on the outside um, so I can get a visual and then um, I can go from there. Some modelers um, build their motors first. Um, it's all about the motor so um, they have to get their motor built so they know what to do um, on the inside here or if they got to do something to the hood or something like that. Um, mainly I'm a visual guy um, like my friend Tom Jackson there at um, Woods Chopper and some of you other car builders we have to see what it looks like on a set of wheels. The car don't have no paint Nothing else is out of plastic, but we got the interior in, the body on, and the chassis together just so we can see um, how it sets. <laughs> and it's just something that, you know, I've always said it even in the real car and even in the real car scene, a set of wheels will make or break a vehicle. Um, so, taking this further what I would do is after you get the body lines all smooth the way you want them to do um, you do what you call the, a rough in um, you don't want to just glue it and not sand it because then whatever you do next is not going to be um, flat with the body I got a little finger glue right there um, so what I usually do is do it as if it was body work and um, finish it off before you go to the next one and then that right there will give you your best um, preset. I know in a lot of hobbies, um, we talk about dry fitting, um, dry fitting and dry fitting, you know, test fitting and, and all this other stuff. Um, but when you're going to add in parts, like I didn't like the way the width was on this. Um, so I sliced it in the middle, took out a, a, like a quarter out of it, and then brought it back in. So that way the shape stayed, you know, flat along the sides. Um, your your body filler won't look like this um, when you buy it from Clearly Scale um, because I've sanded a lot of other detail off because I also wanted this really nice, smooth, um, round look on the rear end. Um, just um, Pete says, um, do what I want to, um, and this is the direction I'm going. Um, it's easier for me to build um, when I can take my own take on it versus... Um, like I want to say if somebody come and took your menu, you know, um, but that, that's just me. And working with Pete at Scaled World and having the, the limitations um, that he sets forth, which are very, very few. Um, I, think, I think the only thing he requested is it not be pink. And uh, <laughs> so, um but yeah, there's some other thing. There's a few other things I want to reshape on on the C1 set um, for my own liking, um, and and what have you. Um, what what is counterproductive for me, guys, is I work behind the camera, and I want to stress to you guys how easy it is to customize vehicles. But then again, there's going to be some times that I won't be able to show you what I'm doing, and I apologize for that firsthand. Um, Pete has joined us. I just seen him come in and comment. Um, welcome here, boss man. Um, we hope that we provide um, a great place for you guys to come down, sit down for an hour or two, not only just to follow me, um, but to enjoy some great pictures here um, at Scaled World. Um, each week, like I did at the beginning of the show, each week I want to try to... Um, to update you guys on stuff that I see from the hobby. I'm getting a lot of help from um, international scale modelers. Um, they always have a live show on Friday um, where their members share tips. Um, their members are sharing. They have a whole section of new stuff coming, um, not only from the UK, but from around the world. And as I gather information like that, we'll be able to transfer that back over to you um, as long as I have their permission to do so. They run a great show, something I would recommend you guys get if you have a few hours on Friday to hang out. Um, the time frames are different. They go live on UK time, and it's a pretty good show, um, good information, a lot of silliness, um, but still friendly and um, enjoyable. So um, you guys will, will, will really enjoy it because there's car builders there. Um, there's military builders. You know, it's just a, a lot of uh, um, genres all in one spot to enjoy. Um, now that I've got this out, guys... 
I must have went too fast. I see a lot of glue prints. That's one thing. Super glue takes forever to dry on a kit, but it will dry instantly on your fingers. Anybody in the chat know why super glue was invented? What its real purpose was? Yep, John got it. <sighs> Alright. If you guys haven't seen, where is my new scriber? This is the scriber that the boys from um, Diversified Scaler sent me. Um, I found the original box. Last time I showed this, I didn't have the original box. Um, it is a great, it's a great scriber. Alright. So... Which direction do I want to go first? Once you attack resin, guys, um, it gets easier every time. Um, not to say the companies get better every time, but the resin itself gets better. Um, working with it, your know-how with it, how you clean it, you know, how you need to work with it, what you need to use to um, adhere it to, to a kit or something, um, gets better better and more useful and easier to use so don't be afraid um first thing people get afraid of is the cost because a lot of your resin stuff's expensive and then comes the fact is how do i paint it how do i glue it Right now I'm using 80 grit because I'm taking the side of this flare down. I'm trying to keep it the same angle as the body. I know Pete and the Diversified Scaler guys have been preparing for um, the NNL this weekend. Um, they are actually helping the the club that it is um, um, the diverse fight killers are actually helping the the club that is putting it on helping them get stuff set up you know goodie bags and stuff and you know it's a great way that the community comes together and builds like that Lay my sanders out here. That way I can fiddle fat and find which ones I need. I started out with the 80, now I'm going with the 180. And right there. And then you know you go further on. And you kind of want to do all your rough in work before you ever put a filler on the car. So that way you're almost smooth. You want, even in the real automotive business, you want as, as less filler as you can get on the vehicle. <sighs> because filler is like uh, concrete. It will shift um, with some temperatures um, if you don't use the right format to build it up so you don't want it super thick you want it to be able to be able to flex and sometimes I've worked on cars where instead of them fixing the rust they just filled it full of 
mud and bondo, I mean, and then Now see, this is the look right here, just to give it a little bit different look than what it's looking like over here. Um, your jeans, John, you can run your pants over your sand, your sanders over your pants, which I'm not wearing jeans now, but usually that cleans them up pretty easy. Then I want to change the tail lights a little bit too, guys. I just don't know. Later, Pete. I just don't know how just yet. Now, I won't lie to you guys. When I was growing up in the automotive, learning how to do automotive work, my uncle had a body shop, and my dad always did, like, yard mechanic work and stuff. So I kind of learned as I was actually doing the job. And it wasn't until last week's show that I was informed that UMP Sanders are meant to go one direction i was always used to sanding crisscross so that way you're you don't build uh gouges and the way ump sanders were designed they're designed to go in a series and eliminate the scratch by doing it in one direction so you're always learning new things no matter who you're following and for what reason so, I'm going to have, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of filler work there on the edges just to get them to line up right. I don't like using super glue right there on my edges, so I'll have to do some filling work for that. Now let's round this off just a little bit. Like I said, I'm doing this just to make it my own, guys. There was nothing wrong with the C1 stuff at all. It's just I wanted mine to be a bit different. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to dovetail this right here. Like the front. See how the front goes B? 
bippity bop like that I'm gonna do the rear like that too I'm gonna do this rear like that so I need some tape Then where did my pants go? Right. Then I'm gonna draw my line, my pencil. Let's go this way here. Alright, so now I drew the area in which I want the indention to go. Now let's see how far down we go. Now this right here is Azu tape that I also get from UMP. Like I said guys, they got a great line of products. Um, and after Friday's show, Tim announced um, several other countries that are now stocking vendors in other countries like Poland and what have you um, stocking UMP products so if you were stuck not being able to get it um, believe Hobby World USA um, will stock um, UMP stuff but I order it straight from Paul and, and baby James and them if you order it from Paul and Hannah and baby James um, usually get some goodies in there too. You get some gummies. So what I did, I sectioned off a little bit. And this is where I want to sand down the tail and what I'll do first is I don't want that one I want to take this one here I'm just going to sand putting them through hell and guys I use um, super glue for body filler and real automotive filler um, so I'm using stuff a lot harder and heavier than uh, to me and stuff like that so my sanders won't last as long as some of your guys's will um, but I put mine through hell and, and they've lasted a long time um, I think two years now from off the first bundle that I got from them and they sell them in separate packs, but you can get the bundle. It's cheaper, and you're going to use them, so.
what I do is just, you start, you don't just go in there and start chomping away. Even though I drew bigger lines, you don't want to just go in there and start chomping away. You want to come back and, and look at the process so you can see exactly um, where it's headed and what you like and what you don't like. So right now, that's just after a few. You can see I didn't go as far as the lines I drew. I'm just seeing if, how I feel it, you know, how do I do I like it? Um, you know, do I want to go further? And I kind of want to widen it up just a little bit more. That way, you do it like this, and not with a hobby knife, um, and you don't you won't lose too much. You can go in there and and work it. And then all I'm doing is taking a sanding sponge. I and mean, what that does is it just rounds it off better. If See how it rounds it off. And I think I like that, guys. Have to do some cleanup to the back, but I think I like that. Just enough to give it, just enough to make it mine, you know what I mean? Just to make it, you can tell that uh, it was a mini version instead of just a C1 version. What do you guys think about that you know not a whole lot it's just I made it not come over the edge like it was and I was able to do that little blip right there and then if we just sand all of that off Yeah, see now with the pencil marks off, you guys will be able to see the, a better look at it. That, cause that way you're not going to be distracted by the pencil. Um, it's just what 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 they're calling the dovetail is like wings. You have the body of your bird, and then the wings come on top of it. And that's why that's why I call it a dovetail. Because it's still going to be aerodynamic, but you've changed it in a way to where it's putting uh, outer pressure, not inner pressure. Hello? Hello? This is Mr. Irwin. Oh, I'm good, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Yes, thank you. If you guys didn't notice, last Wednesday, or last week, I wasn't on um, YouTube at all. Um, I made a comment on Facebook that I was dealing with some things. Um, I got my teeth fixed yesterday. Um, I was working outside, um, putting up some spotlights around the house. Um, my dumbass um, started to climb down the ladder, and I pulled the ladder down on me and chipped my front tooth right dead in the middle of the front. So yesterday, I spent a couple hours at the dentist um, getting a choop, uh, a choof, <laughs> getting a choop, uh There it is. About said it again. Getting a, a chip tooth fit. Um, so they were calling me back and asking how everything was, so that's good. Worst thing about it, man, is the day after, like right now, um, if I'm being honest with you guys, um, the shots, I could feel where they gave me the shots um, to fix it. But lucky enough, I'm still here. Yeah, I had a lot of stuff going on last week. Um, 
woke up uh, Tuesday morning, uh, Wednesday morning, is what set all this in motion. Um, no, it was Tuesday morning, because I worked Monday night. No, it was, I don't know. I woke up one day last week, and there was, somebody had egged and put taco sauce all over the car. Um, one of the neighborhood kids. So, my house has video surveillance, so I watched seen who it was, addressed the problem, and then thought, you know, I need more light out there so I get a better picture of the kids um, next time they try to do any of this. And, of course, parents go, oh, it's not my kid. My kid was in at 9 o'clock. Or they said their kid went to bed at 7.30, and, and it's 9 o'clock when I found them on video. Um, so that was a lie. And then you show them to your face, and... They're like, well, I will address it. And I was like, yeah, better you address it over me. I, so I thought, you know what, I'll just get better light out there. And hung up one light fine, go to do the second light. And it was bad. I had to go clear back to Lowell's and get a new light because it was bad. And then I come back, and that's when the damn ladder fell. I locked myself out of the house. It was a bad day bad week all in all is what I posted so what we're going to do now guys we're going to cut the what I did is I just took some two inch tape um, made my own um, masking tape um, don't believe the hype guys this 3M tape is not the same as Tamiya um, Tamiya is a low contact tape um, I would not use the Tamiya tape um, I would not use this 3M tape if you was already into paint and everything um it is pretty sticky um like i said all a lot of my model products or um a lot of my products are um all automotive based so you know the adhesives is a little bit more but um So back to what we was talking about, the Scaled World new email address. That is for you guys to email, um, and we can keep track of questions versus um, versus you guys trying to do your submitting. Um, you're submitting the videos. Um, Screen. There you guys go. Kind of hard work behind the camera. Sorry about that. Um, I actually got this scriber from the Diversified Scalers club and it is a uh, from john is it from the check um john and them did a review on the ism live show um i called it all models um but somebody else called it something different so i don't know how to tell you guys how to do it um got something on the box there but i'm using this 0.2 millimeter thing here you can see it's got a it's, it's really neat and then it has um, then it's showing you the three pointers there and that's the different whiffs of them and they're actually stamped on the side the 45 you know and basically that's so you know the width that you do um, in there and it comes with this really neat little crate well that's pretty cool um, in the military and armor side of the hobby, um, there's lots and lots of panel lines and panel details. And so what this tool is made for, like if you guys can see me now, it helps deepen the lines up. Um, so that way when they start putting two or three color um, camos over the top of it, um, they, don't lose, um, they don't lose the detail.
I do not. I'm sorry, Anthony. I do not. And on the box, it doesn't show anything. You got an email. I'm going to pause this right here for you guys so that way you can check out that email. I can't read none of that, Anthony. Um, this is as foreign to me as Spanish writing is. <laughs> Did you get that? Well, I'm thankful for the accident because I hadn't been to the dentist since 2015. So... It feels like I, I just went and she said, no, you hadn't been here since 2015. So I'm thankful that it got me back into the dentist. Um, no new cavities. They just had to fix um, the chip that I caused. And I had a filling loose. I, I never felt it. Hmm. So she fixed that. Guys, I believe Steve Courtney is with us now. Um, Steve, I've mentioned your um, 66 Suburban build for Scaled World coming up. Um, so those guys can um, follow you on your channel on that. And um, so if you guys ain't subscribed to Steve, go over there and um, subscribe to Steve's channel. Um, look at the two Suburbans he's already done. And then he's about to start one um, for Scaled World. Um, so stay in touch with his channel so you guys can follow updates on that knowing the way the last two came out Steve can't wait to see your version for skilled world So after scribing my new lines, I got some filling to do because I missed. Tape wasn't down right. And what I like to do, guys, when you start customizing, for me, it's better for me to start and work my way around the body instead of trying to do, like, everything to the front end and then everything to the rear end and then try to get the sides to match. Usually, I, I work around the car instead of, you know, flopping around. Anthony, 
just go over if you're just go over um, hit your finger if you're on your phone or if you're on a computer um, hit Steve's picture of the supreme wheel and it will take you right to his channel and then you just subscribe from there Let's look at the kit. Now on the kit tail light, it's a pure cross tail light. If you guys look, the kit tail light, it's clear crossed. You can't see that. I want to do it different. I want to do it different. Let's look for some tail lights. Right here, I got a box of red. That I do tail lights like when you know you're digging through extra box of parts and stuff. Got a charger tail light. Okay, I think I like the way this looks. So let me get out the tail light again. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, if we're already going this custom, you know what I mean? Why not do a custom tail light? This is what's supposed to be in there, guys. Okay, that's what's supposed to be in there. But what if... I don't know how much different this is going to show red on red. But what if we take... Put a set of 69 Camaro tail lights in there backwards... See, this is the front, but what if we did it backwards and made them level, like, made them unlevel like that? Let's see. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that, Steve. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Guys, Steve, over the last couple years, Steve is using all automotive-based um, products, too. 
and you ought to see some of the creations that he's been doing um, using um, base coat, clear coat colors, and house of color stuff. Um, see if I put a piece of white plastic in there. It's great to have a, a community um, where you're not selective on what you share. Um, there's some great tips and tricks out there um, that some people find um, what I want to say um, secretive that they think that shouldn't be shared or whatnot. Um, and having uh, having a builder um, in your in your friendship um, that you both can learn from is um, is great, you know. And Steve will share what he what he's doing uh, on his channel. Um, so if I put a piece of plastic, this is just this is just quick, guys. I'm gonna put a piece of plastic in there like that, and then the backwards Camaro tail light. Look too Camaro-ish, or does it look like? What do you guys think? Come on, focus. I think if this right here was all flat black or gun metal, and then this clear tail light pod on top of it. Now I have, that's funny you should say that, Anthony, because I have, I have this piece here from an old monogram charger, and it actually says charger in it, that I had bare metal foiled and painted. See? And actually, that actually says charger. And I can place it right there in the middle. That's why I love digging through parts. You guys never know what you're going to find. So don't overlook the opportunity to dig through someone's parts box. You'll be amazed at what you see, what you can find. Um, like John and them being military guys, um, sometimes some of their junk boxes are full of um, weapons. Uh, they may or may not have used during a build and um, I don't know if that's enough I just said to myself that I, I don't know if that's enough and the first thing that came to my head was the mom from Friday where Craig pulls out the milk she says eat some cereal she said, I ain't got enough milk. She said, make it enough. Here's what we'll do. So um, glue me out a little piece of what the tail light actually sets. So then let's trim this out. First thing, let's just fill it in. I'm gonna fill the whole thing in. All right, now, a lot of you guys are using Tamiya glue, um, the Tamiya Extra Fine, right here. Um, but since I've gotten pure styrene sheet right here, 
and I kind of need it to adhere to a bigger piece of plastic um, I'm using a glue called uh, Faller um, this is a German glue too um, I think that's German John what do you think that is and um, I picked it up a long time ago and I just enjoy using it and now I forgot whoever even recommended it but I ended up picking it up um, you can get it off of eBay um, it's a little thicker if you look it's not as thin it's thin but it's not as thin as to me extra thin and that way you can get some movement time with it and you can help adhere the plastic together um, it's not so great on kit plastics um, but it does well with bonding um, pure styrene like this evergreen sheet um, to kit plastic um, but for some reason it didn't do well when I tried to use it uh, kit plastic to kit plastic uh, I don't know why um, but when it comes to working with the styrene stuff it works great um, styrene to plastic do that there just a few minutes to set up John guys if you guys don't follow John Sharpie um, pretty decent friend um, he's been working on well he did a, a inbox review of a killer looking tank I want to um, I want to try to attack um, it's got these rollers on the front like it's a John what is it is it like a mind is that a mind disarmor or something? Um, anyway, it's like a regular tank, but it had big wheels out in front of it like it was crunching shit. Stuff, crunching stuff. So now at least I'm not trying to hold plastic in there. I got that. Let's see. Get this tail light. Yeah, mine clearance. Guys, I kind of like that. Let me get the other one set up. Oh, you dumb, dumb, dummy. Okay. Yeah, um, basically the plastic struck adhesive Anthony is just a different brand of this Pro Weld. Um, and for the money and for um, the strength of this, to be honest, I stopped using those. I started using the Tamiya, the extra thin. Works better, easier to find. Um, maybe not at, see, it's right here, it said two fluid ounce. It's hard for me to get this Pro Weld now. I don't see where it says the ounceage of this glue 40 milliliters hmm I'm I'm dumb when it comes to math hello what's up babe Oh, 
Alright, love you. Bye. Well, there's your answer. You get you get less than this, but still, it's easier to get. Um, it'll still be easier to get, though. Um, you can walk in to Hobby Lobby um, with 40% off coupon and get this for like two fifty here in the U.S. when this right here is seven dollars now. Um, when you can find it, and I haven't been able to find this in stock. You can tell this bottle here is pretty old. Um, I haven't found it in stock for a while, but once everybody else. And the last time I got it, I don't have $4.99. Okay, this this bottle here has a price tag of $4.99. Well, come on, a $4.99, but I haven't opened it. You can see the dust is built up on it. Because yeah. I started using the Tamiya Extra Thin. At first, um, Freddie from um, the Migos page was buying the bottles of the Tamiya Extra Thin left and right, and I was teasing them about why do you need so much glue and then once I used it realized it, it is a fairly good glue um, easy to handle comes with the brush you know comes with the brush that you can extend like you can see I got the a pin in it because I extended it um, I drilled a hole in it and put a pin in it so that way I can actually reach on um, the lower stuff in it um, I want to do something real quick where's my molotovs give me my molotovs right here 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 Guys, I truly am trying to stay on topic. Sorry about the phone calls. Um, I'm going to Molotov the inside of these just to get a look. Just to get the look. Someone had recommended that we get that UV, that UV glue, I don't even know what it's called now, something that's seen on TV glue or something like that, and I just don't know if that actually, I mean, I don't know what I actually use it for, I don't think I could sand it for like body work, and I like how I set my glass in, I've been using for years I've always used super glue with a kicker um, to, to place my glass but Basically, guys, all I did is did some Molotov on the inside. I just wanted to see um, what it would look like if it had the chrome in there. This being red plastic, I didn't know how well it would show up. It don't show up at all. Maybe when the black and stuff's in there, it'll look better. You know what? Because I already know it ain't going to work. I'm going to tack it up here with, with the fuller. And I don't have any tweezers. You know what, I think that what you just posted on there, I think that's what Alan Spence did a review on. I think that's what it was, a bionic pen.
Because once I seen that name pop up, I sounded familiar. Guys, I don't know. Once I got it mounted in there, I don't know if I'm liking this. Godfather's Customs. I guess I haven't checked his channel out yet, bud. All right, this is just some quick test fitting. What do you guys think about that that is reversed see how they're there they stick out a little bit it's reversed come on it's reversed 69 Camaro so they stick out like pods directional pods there you go There it is. Hold on, Godfather. I'm going to try to see if I can't click on here. See, it's not letting me. When I click on your name, Godfather, it wants me to report you, remove you, put user in timeout, or hide his or her channel. <laughs> I'll go back when I read the comments. I'll go back, Bernie, and, and, and check it out. Just to make sure I'm sub to you or not. But I'm not worried about this line right here. Um, guys, I'll fill all that in um, with my filler and stuff. I, right now, I was just wanting to get a look at the tail light stuff. And then I'm going to have to fill in, smooth all this stuff here in. So there's still some filler work to come. Uh, I'll probably add the filler work off camera. And um, when we come back next week... Um, continue on it looks like it's almost um one o'clock here we've been on here since 11 so that's a little good shift um i appreciate all you guys taking the time to hang out don't forget the beginning of the video all the information i shared um see if it's something um that you guys you know feel is you know information to you i guess or whatnot um Look at that. I could just cut this up. Huh. I got a couple more of these guys, so... I might just cut these up and go from there. Because if I do that... I do that. Put that in there like that. I get the tail light filled in. Alright, yeah, Bernie, there's a bunch of great guys that follow me and support me. Um, so hopefully they come over, get your channel boosted up, and you can have great fun and be talked about and made fun of. They don't always make fun of me, but when they do, they let me hear about it. <laughs> and I lost the lid to the glue. Not good. Not good at all. Well, I'll be searching for a glue tip here in a minute. Then I got this red stuff out. I got this. Out. So 
what if yeah well thank you I appreciate that I don't know what I do with this darned old lid now now I'm getting excited guys I don't know what I do with that lid Drawing a blank, guys. I'm drawing a blank. I'm gonna do. I got two more of these. I got two more of these. So let's just. We're about to dissect Rebel's tail light. I'm gonna turn the Dremel on for a minute, guys. Like I said, you guys are more than welcome to leave any feedback you want. Good, bad, things you want to see, things that you think, you know, need to be improved on. Because I mentioned, like I said, I mentioned products. I mentioned people that me and Pete enjoy to use. Um, we realize that sometimes that might not always be um, the same feelings for you guys. But it is whatever it is, it is. Something maybe maybe something like that. Maybe narrow them up a little bit. Maybe cut it in half from those halves right there. Hello, punch. Next time you guys see me, I will be a year older. 
Um, my birthday's Friday. Right now, I don't know a guest off yet. Just haven't come to that conclusion yet. I don't know, maybe... What if we bring them out just a little bit? Oh, yeah, I'll be 43, Gary. Oh, dang, we're all right around each other, Punch. That's pretty cool. <laughs> John said of little taste. I don't know, guys. I'm going to play around with the taillights a little bit. I just, I just want to do something different. Because I got some photo etch for the logo. So what if we just did this? Let's go with the wire. I think I'm going to have me a fried egg and Canadian bacon sandwich for lunch. I don't know yet. I like the way John's camera is set up when he's working on the bench. I need to get a camera above me. Working in front of the camera it feels like I'm not giving you guys the outlook of what I'm actually working on. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> oh. So I added a piece of plastic in there so that way it ain't so shallow. Let's put that in there. Put this in there. Now I'll kind of hold them in place. I know it don't look like much right now, guys, because it's all white plastic. But built that up just a little bit maybe do another layer Let's see what would another layer look like nope we're, 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 we're. <laughs> oh I don't make fun of Canadians but when I do I will laugh Oh, whoa, don't lose it, you big dummy. Okay. I think I like that guy. Just something a little different. Yeah, but I wanted to do some. I wanted to do something different. I just wanted to, you know, I'm going with the C1 body kit, the clearly scale front and rear dams, uh, a clearly scale hood. I just wanted to do um, just a different look, is all. You know, that way when you see my build, you're going to realize, oh look, he's done this, that, and the other, versus oh look, he's got a C1 kit. You know. So I think <laughs> you guys got a regular French ripping holiday, don't you, John? Eh? I got a good friend in um, the MCA, MCBA 
um, association, Mike Mathers, um, that's from Canada, and he he's very friendly, very funny, and sometimes we'll get to to joking, and, and you know he don't take it to heart um, too much, you know what I mean? But he 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 has been through some shit up there in Canada. Um, I think he was uh, further north working a rig, and um, he took a hot pot of water outside and literally threw it in the air, and we watched it freeze right as you know, right as it's hitting the air. I can only imagine the kind of weather John Pole and you guys up in Canada get most of the year. Yeah, I got the photo etch. Um, we got the Hazagawa um, photo etch uh, set for this. My eyes are going cross-eyed. And see on that tail light piece that I built up, I think we can either do... I don't know if I want to wait until Jeremy John gets... Hopefully there would be a Hellcat emblem coming. Or something but like I have this photo X challenger label right there if you guys can see that um, these are supposed to go I think on the fenders there's one set that goes on the valve covers I thought one went on the valve covers but I like the big Hemi emblem I like the big Hemi emblem right here so I may be able to do like right there a Hemi in the center thing if you guys can see a hemi and then um challenger on there um punch it is going to be um the hobby design see if you can see that and it comes with a lot of emblems so i don't know i can fill in that back part it's even got the rams for the inner for the center wheels if I wanted to put center wheel emblems on there. And then I can always or I could just do the ram itself and don't put the word hemi in there. Just do the ram like one little center emblem. Now this dodge here was supposed to be for was supposed to be for the tail light. But it's a solid piece, so I don't know if I want to add that. And then it gives me the honeycomb for the grill and everything to punch. And for the hood inserts. And they're see-through, but I'm not going to use that hood. Um, we're using um, this hood. So, well guys, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Looks like um, we got a little bit of time in today. Um, next week... Um, we'll be approaching some more, um, I'll get a good even gap in there. And then next week, um, we'll go at it. If, um, we'll always do the weekly Wednesday, um, the scale world Wednesday and, um, time permitting if I feel like I can get some time put in um, we can do some scale world building at the same time but we're definitely going to try to focus on um, a scaled world Wednesday um, every every week the other hood the other hood is just a factory hood like this and um, you just put the photo etch behind it in it behind it something like that I haven't read yet and um what I find I just seen Savage post up what I find about doing the live feed is it's easier than filming editing posting waiting for it to load up and then you know what have you um for me, I don't have a home computer. I do everything on my phone, guys. Um, the drawbacks would be um, I got to work behind the camera 
instead of under it like some of uh, some of the other better building channels and I'm still mad I don't know what I do with this lid I had it here and it's just a tiny thin black lid so it's gonna be hard to find if it fell on the floor and um, I, I, I really enjoy guys the interaction um, that I get while I'm working and being able to talk with you guys because sometimes you know there is a question or something um, that needs a, a good quick answer to and you might not always um, be able to respond when um, like like the group John's involved in when John Sharp and them go live you're looking at 200 plus people um, are coming and viewing we're always commenting I know me Frankie goes to Hollywood um, see more Bob Bobbingtons um, we're always in there having fun talking um, punch is in there um, you know when we get to um, enjoying the show and enjoying each other's company um, it's easy to get lost because there's a billion comments going back and forth um four or five people could have their own conversations and stuff going on um i like doing the live show because i don't have to do the editing um people can come in here um you guys can also chat back and forth um at that time versus um sitting there like reading um watching my video and then watching um john say something and then you know wait two to three days to reply to john um once you see his video you can say well sharpie i seen you um on your d90 um dozer how did you do this detail and at that moment john can say well i had to sand it flat paint it flat and then i weathered it you know um versus four or five different questions on one video that that seems to get overlooked well, guys, I'm on a lid finding mission now. I'm going to grab me some lunch. Um, you guys have a great day. And um, yeah, the demons, the demons going to be a beast. I think it's I think it's a, a it's a better car to own than the Hellcat. If you would ask me, um, the Hellcats like a street car and the demons more like a strip car. Um, I think the demon would be. Yeah, that's true, John. <laughs> um, that's if you know. That's that's if you know your money where your money lies. Um, like when Chevrolet and Ford did their co-part um, Camaro and Mustangs. I mean, I don't want to spend a hundred and nineteen thousand dollars on a car that ain't going to have a streetable title. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that demon is a beast, Jay. Well, I really do appreciate you guys' friendship. Your time spent here with me. Um, please don't forget, um, check out Scaled. <sighs> Go check out ScaledWorld.net. And um, enjoy the hobby, guys. Enjoy the friends that you make along in the hobby. And just because you're not a... a airplane builder or a motorcycle builder or a miniature builder um, check out some of these other building channels you'll be surprised um, the friendships that you can that you can um, um, get into and some of the other interests that might peak your um, peak your hobby needs you know um, I will try to have more information on stuff throughout the, the community um, for our show next Wednesday um, Tune in to let me make let me get this for you guys. Um, tune in Friday for the International Scale Modeler Live Show here on YouTube. Um, they always do um, at least three giveaways um, from stuff as as simple as um, my pickup pencils um, and some UMP sander goodie bags. Um, there's always kits. Um, there's always kits to do. Um, they like they'll give away kits. They always have a tap and tick. They're showing stuff. Um, you guys can actually see our friend John right there at Sharpie Models actually um, attends the show quite often, and he'll be able to show um, firsthand some of the products that he's working on, stuff that he's trying to build. Um, it's a great staff of guys. Um, some great characters too. 
It, it is just a, it's just a blast. Um, you guys have a great day. Skilledworld.net for all your modeling inspirations. Um, and we got, we got plans for you guys um, to keep yourselves involved in the hobby. Um, here's some quick links. Don't forget skilledworld.net. Hope you guys got today to enjoy the show. Um, I put a couple hours in. Um, even made a Q-tip a lid until I could find the lid. And um, you guys have a great day. And I really do appreciate you guys um, supporting me, um, Scaled World, and the other members in the community um, that are um, actively building for Scaled World. Um, you guys have a great day. This is Minnie, and I'll see you another year older next week. Peace.